Thanks very much, Nick. I'm going to talk about the assessment of a patient with a wrist fracture, the, uh, the first uh, index um, consultation in the emergency department. This will be something you, you all do and you're very experienced at doing, and, but it sets the scene and uh, there may be something on the hematoma block um, or technique that you uh, may pick up. In the context of a polytrauma case, the wrist fracture is low priority uh, with respect to the primary survey uh, and is life before limb. Once you've got a, an awake uh, patient who's happy to talk, then you want to assess the mechanism of injury and don't skip this, whether it's a high energy, uh, falling off a horse or being hit by a car, a lot of horse riding goes a lot around in Cambridgeshire, or whether it's a low energy such as tripping over the cat or an elderly lady tripping over the curbstone, uh, an osteoporotic fracture. The rest of the history, self-explanatory, want to know whether they've injured their limb before, whether they've had any previous surgery, uh, whether there's any social histories, uh, are they a smoker? Do they have any um, current comorbidities? So they've got angina, um, have they got any um, neurological deficit, immune deficiency, have they got COVID? Um, are they taking in medications? Are they on anticoagulants or aspirin? Uh, might affect the bleeding. And do they, are they allergic to anything, in particular local anesthetic that might affect your treatment? And it comes to the, the, the brief, Clinical assessment, it's the Apley uh, mantra, look, feel, but without the move. And they're going to move a painful wrist, but assess the temperature, feel the pulse, and then you're going to look at the sensation. Feel the sensation, compare it to some normal uh, part of the body, touch the face and, and score it out of 10. And you're going to record the sensation in the median, radial and ulnar nerves before and after your procedure. Then you go and evaluate the x-ray. You probably will already have seen it, but try and be like Sherlock Holmes, the famous UK um, uh, detective. And I'm sure you all spotted the additional fracture in this wrist, which is the, a waist fracture of the scapefoot, in addition to a comminuted fracture of the distal radius. You'll assess the x-ray along the, the standard radiographic parameters that have been mentioned already. Forgive the repetition. And then you're going to an analgese the wrist, make it pain-free. Beers block, well-recognized technique, um, and it works well uh, if you're experienced at doing it with a double cuff and using um, prilocaine. However, there are risks if it's not done properly, systemic toxicity or, an or aller allergy to the local anesthetic. More often uh, use is the technique of hematoma block, but it needs to be done properly and um, diligently using the uh, correct concentrations and putting the needle in the right place. Standard technique would be 20 mils of local anesthetic, which would be 10 mils of 0.5% bupivacaine and 10 mils of 1% lignocaine, or you can use xylocaine, which is with one in uh, 200,000 adrenaline, with a 23 gauge, it's a blue needle, into the fracture site. Better would be to initially start with a well ant technique using an infiltration of 1% uh, xylocaine around the radial, dorsal and ulnar aspects of the wrist, and in particular the, um, the dorsal ulnar branch, and this will make the wrist pain-free. Mm. Then you need to leave it for 10 to 15 minutes for the local anesthetic to work. When it comes to the reduction, a neat way of allowing the wrist to uh, reduce with longitudinal um, force is to put it into the finger traps and leave it for five or ten minutes and then you can come back and do your reduction which is a standard uh, AO technique longitudinal traction dorsal displacement with axial pulling and then hinging the fracture down again and applying a dorsal and, and palm of force and then you're going to apply your plaster but avoid the extreme positions of the plaster. So the cotton loader position, this patient is likely to get symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. You want a carefully molded radio dorsal slab, which is in a position similar to that. You're obviously going to use POP cast in the acute setting. Once that's done, the patient goes home, 
and then is followed up in the fracture clinic. This concludes the assessment, the initial assessment of the wrist fracture and the learning objective as said. Thanks very much indeed.